Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a great and wonderful day. And unfortunately for a lot of the far left, it's not a great day for them at all. But uh, we get to see on the actual horrible and terrible state of Haiti. And um, why it's a, well, we call um, crap hole, I guess we could call it. Um, so, yeah, it's not the greatest place on the planet. And in fact, it's at war. It's... Um, man-eating, and that's not really a joke here, so, um, we're gonna go over it, and the reason why we're going to go over this is because it wasn't long before until people were defending and saying hooray for Haiti, and it's a great country, and it's peaceful, and, um, this is going on, and we, people don't seem to know what really is going on in that country, because a lot of it is on the down low, so we're gonna go over it today. We have this. Gang leader named Barbecue is now most powerful man in Haiti as U.S. evacuates Americans. Haiti's most notorious gang leader, known as Barbecue, may be the most powerful man in the nation as the Prime Minister remains unable to return home. On Sunday, the U.S. announced that troops had evacuated Americans from the U.S. Embassy and additional forces were brought in to secure the diplomatic compound in Puerto Rico, uh, Prince. Jimmy Trezor, leader of the notorious G9 and family gang, is in command of the bulk of the gunmen stirring, stirring anarchy in the capital, and he vowed to fight until embattled Prime Minister Ariel Henry resigns. I'm ready to make an alliance with the devil, ready to sleep in the same bed as the devil, Trezor told his supporters last week as his fighters destroyed police stations and other governmental facilities. Some claim that the rifle-wielding 47-year-old monster's nickname comes from his penchant for settling his victims on fire, though he says it's an old moniker his mother gave him as a boy. He likened himself to Martin Luther King during an interview with the New Yorker last year and was previously a member of the Hayden National Police. He was expelled from the force in 2018 for alleged ties to a number of horrific crimes, including the slaughter in the, in the El Salang slums in which seven women were, were killed and seven women were raped and 400 homes were burned down according to official reports. Yeah, so this guy seems like a great man, and I'm pretty sure Martin Luther King would love this dude. Yeah, he sounds like a fantastic person. Uh, Jerry Joe, who denied any wrongdoing, went on, to, went on to take over the G9 family, which controls many of the slums and streets of Port, Port uh, Al Prince. Now, I don't know how to pronounce some of these names, so I apologize in, uh, ahead of time. But it's all I have to say, the gang leader's influence in the capital is so large that many view him as a man who will take the reins as Henry's administration struggles to maintain order. Unfortunately, Barbecue is now the most powerful man in Haiti, Jewish Jonathan's and an independent consultant based in Puerto Rico, Prince, told The Guardian. After Haiti's government declared a state of emergency last Sunday, videos and images from social media have shed light on how Puerto Rico, Prince has deteriorated into a war-torn city on the edge. One such viral video from the Associated Press shows dozens of civilians running for their lives, screaming and ducking as gunshots so are heard behind them. So, what's happening here is that Haiti has declared a state of emergency after gang violence and anarchy broke out in this Caribbean nation. Thousands of inmates have taken to the street after two separate prison breaks in Puerto Rico, Prince. Uh, gang leader Jim, uh, Jimmy Charizard, a former national police officer, a police member, who is known as Barbecue, seized power and has vowed to continue fighting until Prime Minister Ariel Henry resigns. Henry is currently in Kenya, where he was on a official trip. He has promised to resign once the Transitional Council is established. So, yeah, this is what's going on here, and um, it doesn't seem too great. Now, we have this military airless American personnel out of Haiti embassy as, as country spirals into violence. Uh, so, this is uh, what's going on here uh, in Haiti. Uh, and it says, um, this is not just the only thing that's going on, right? It says, Haiti cannibal gang are eating people they've killed on the streets of violence. Erupts. Yes. Uh, remember when I said man eating? Yeah, I, I wasn't. I wasn't really lying about this. Yes, the, these people are cannibals. Um, they're eating other people. Uh, it, it, there's actual videos of this, and I'm going to get onto it, obviously. But this is kind of what's going on here. Uh, so we're going to go through this a bit and kind of show you what's going on. Haiti's in a state of chaos as brutal gang members attack police officers with machetes, a journalist in Puerto Rico has claimed. Violence has played the country's capital of, Puerto, uh, uh, of, of Prince for years, but the situation has escalated drastically as gangs demand that Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry resign. A state of emergency has been declared in the country after gangs attacked two prisons, setting many criminals free. It is now thought that 80% thought that of the Haiti capital is controlled by these gangs. 
describing the violence in the country as a journalist said that capitalism is, has been witnessed on the streets as the violence reaches unprecedented, unprecedented levels, reports the Express U.S. Speaking anonymously, they said, Haiti is living in a total chaotic situation right now. It is a total chaos everywhere, especially in the capital where I am right now. Haiti has a leader, Prime Minister Errol Henry, but he is not inside the country right now. In the meantime, you have gangs waging full attacks on key institutions. You also have attacks on police stations. The officers were there, were in there for three hours crying for help. After And after that, we saw images of officers being cut by machetes being shared on social media. The gangs are heavily armed with guns from the U.S., but they are also equipped with high-level technology like drones. The level of violence un is unprecedented, and, and the gangs seemingly want to kill as many people as they can. They are in fear, they're in a fear campaign where they want to appear as murderous and as violent as possible. After the interview, the journalist sent a message reading, Cannibalism is not widespread, but... Definitely an indication of the worsening situation. It, can, it, ha it definitely happens on a few occasions. So, yeah, that's what's going on here. So, um, we have this, and um, we're gonna go on to here, right? Where, where go to the NBC News? These psychopaths, these lunatics. Um, I said Trump said that Trump referred to Haiti and African nations as shit, as crap hole countries, right? So, um. That's what he's talking about, uh, that that uh, these places are terrible countries. Well, 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 we have this here from, you know, uh, and wokeness. Uh, this guy, uh, where we have, uh, of make a uh, where we have uh, these guys uh, talking about the, you know, being a great country. Own version of Make America Great Again hats. It's a hat that says Haiti is great already. We offered it to them and they were quite happy to have it. People really like the slogan in Haiti. Uh, they like it so much so that Omaze.com is now exclusively offering this Haiti is great already t-shirt version. And as you can see, uh, Bill Maher, um, I forgot what this guy's name was, but I really don't care, to be honest with you. And then this chick here, which I don't know, uh, but... Uh, but again, these people are the ones that are saying Haiti is great already. Uh, Haiti is a truly beautiful country. And of course, we go to here and then Haiti cannibal gang are eating people they've killed on the streets as violence erupts. So yeah, that's really fantastic. And then of course, we have Conan O'Brien saying, show your support for the people of Haiti with a great Haiti is great already t-shirt on Earthshirt Soul Benefits. And if you click onto this, Womp, womp, womp. It looks like this is uh, gone. This is no longer here. The uh, <laughs> It's gone. It's bye-bye. Svaporated into thin air. Woof. So, uh, yeah. It, 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 they, and now he's getting roasted because, you know, obviously these people are bloody idiots. And um, we have this here. Gang, situa gang situation reality check. Extremely graphic innocent dude. Now, granted, this is not safe for work, but this is from the R, R, R Haiti subreddit, right? So these are the things that's going on here. I'm going to go over it. It's pretty clear in the discussions in the last month that most people don't understand the level of violence, brutality, and fear right now. If you aren't currently in Haiti and decently plugged in, you aren't close enough to get to it to get a realistic picture of what's happening. The information doesn't make it out and will likely never be presented raw by international media. When I say when I see people say things like, well, the gang should overthrow the government and start a revolution, we don't need help, that we should plant food and ask China for help, to me it's like you are coming from another planet. You don't get it, and you can't because you don't know. Myself and, I am not going to try to pronounce that, uh, have posted some of the local stuff before, but we usually self-censor a bit and filter out the worst. I've hesitated for a while about posting this stuff, but I feel it's the only way people will get it. If all, it often comes up, why don't people fight back or rise up? The answer is fear. Now, as we can see back here, we go to this, that, uh, that like fear is the big thing here or whatnot and what have you. So there you have. The gangs record this stuff, share it, and it goes viral locally. They one, they one up each other and compete on compete on who can show the sickest, most twist most twisted vile acts. It's part of the propaganda and how in the, and how they keep the people in their territory under control. The videos in the link below are extremely graphic, violent, gory, and real. That means bodies being dismembered and butchered with machetes, gangsters eating pieces of flesh off victims, bodies that were set on fire, 
This is going back to uh, this guy here where uh, cannibal gang are eating people. So uh, this is this is here. Piles of dismembered bodies from the conflict in, in uh, Archambault. Uh, a suspected informant being shot on a trash pile and bleeding out. Several heads being put on altars. A captured police officer's body being mutilated and his head being bashed in. This is a random sample from the last year. There have been hundreds going back to the first massacres in 2017, guys. 2017! I've lost count. A new one, a few new, a few new ones go viral every week. I purge my phone when I travel, but I could probably put a hundred of these together in a few days if I asked some friends in the security networks. These things happen regularly in front of the people that live in these areas. You want to help? This is the reality of li of, of life in gang-controlled areas, not counting extortion, grape, and intimidation. This is what what needs to be stopped, and the government and the police isn't up to the task. And there's one other thing that I found down here as well. Uh, that should probably be read a little bit more, uh, bigger for you guys. Uh, uh, I, I had to find it. <clears throat> because the one thing that I read, uh, that uh, this is an ongoing thing, and this is not due to, uh, uh, this is not something that is, you know, being related to just the government or what have you. It's an actual societal problem. It's an issue of, uh, 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 that, so, uh, this is what's been going on. So, oh yeah, this is where it is. This guy says, short term, the only way to stop them and reestablish a base on is counter-violence. PNH right now can't do, the, do it. They don't have the manpower. Training, leadership, independent, train, leadership, independence, equipment to deal with this. So, buddy, so, somebody has to help. That can happen in different ways. The bigger problem is our society is broken. I really mean that, and it's not an olig oligarchy for, or for a meddling problem. So there is some truth to those narratives, but they are fair, 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 far from being an, an accurate or, com or a complete picture. It's bigger than that. People just like to repeat those talking points because it's an easy cop-out that gives us something to blame. It's also a narrative of a part of the local political establishment has been pushing for decades. It's like saying, Six, stick it to the man, everybody can get behind it, but it doesn't really mean much. If somebody showed up tomorrow with a thousand, with a thousand special forces, killed all the gang members and enough soldiers to stop the violence, it would be temporary. The gadgets that led to this still exist. Many of us left in 2017, the international committee watched us out of Haiti and expected us to make our own way after 50 years of peacekeeping. It, it took us n exactly nine months from when the last troops left to get back on our on our BS. In three years, we erased the games of the last 15 and went back to 2004. In six, we took it to a level of violence of violence and economic recession we have never seen before. That is us on a, as a society. No single small group has the power to take 11 million there. We let it happen through lack of involvement, apathy, selfish individualism, blaming everybody but ourselves, and expecting somebody else to solve our problems for us. We also don't have leaders. Culturally here, the nail that sticks out gets the hammer. Nobody wants to stick out. The ones that tend to that tend, that do tend to be the bad ones, I don't know how we are going to heal from the last six years if this stops. I don't know how we're going to move forward from here. So this is not just like, you know, a, a government or our type of issue. And then we can see the same thing happening here in the US, right? Where people in the US are voting certain ways and causing the problems around them and then they're getting angry or complacent or whatever with, for the things that they voted for over the things that they've done. It's actually asinine. And this is stuff that was about a year ago, right? Uh, this is the same thing that made the post. And this was a year ago. So this is not something that happened like immediately here or when the article happened right here or what have you from today. No, this was at least stuff that was talked about, about a year ago and even stuff that was happening was from 2017. So Haiti is a crap hole. They have to get their stuff in order and unfortunately for us, there's nothing that we can do. Like as the guy said, even if you sent people to go and deal with these people, these problems or what have you, it wouldn't solve the issue because it's the problem is societal. And and that means to us, even as our country, we have to solve our problems as a society in order to fix the problems. Because again, even if we do go out to war, we have to fix our societal structure onto why this is happening. And we have to change the society. So again, Hades is a crap hole and uh, Donald Trump was right and now these woke lefties and these far uh, woke leftist uh, idiots are all eating their shoes because they're morons. Because they don't understand what's going on. 
Maybe go talk to people there. Go to the actual dangerous areas where the crap is happening instead of being in a very safe place that obviously is not under a good amount of siege. So, yeah. Uh, these people are idiots. They're not very intelligent. And it's showing. And we all knew Bill Maher wasn't very intelligent, but this really hurts him. He keeps on taking L's after L's for the past few months now. And it's kind of embarrassing, honestly. Well, guys, that's it for the video. Last guy to share. As always, take care, my friends. I'm disgusted by what I see in public. Even people closest to us can't be trusted. Because it's algorithmic disease, the social media.